What's up, survivors? <laughs> Welcome back to another guide for Myth of Empires and one of my first few back since 1.0. Okay, so this guide is going to cover farming because I feel like this is very important because it is a very key feature in the game that everybody will use at some point unless you're part of a big clan and you have a farmer to do all the work for you. <laughs> but let's say you don't have a farmer and you need to understand what exactly farming is and how it is affected in the game i'm going to be using my main character for this to kind of help you guys out and give you guys kind of an idea of early mid game and a little bit of late game um, farming and how it is affected so first and foremost what what can you do with farming in the game um farming you can pretty much do just about anything from materials that you can only get for making armor uh, all the way down to things for alchemy all well i say quote alchemy um and then also all the way up to things for feeding your animals to growing food for your you know civilization your people your your kingdom um, as well as other clan members and things like that so we're going to be using the common test fields as an example but first let's go into our uh, menu so we can go over where farming takes place farming is going to be primarily in your workbench and tools category this very first one up here okay and it's going to be this top like row roughly so this first top category right here you unlock your very first set of farming tools right here at level 16 so once you hit 16 you can start farming in the game you'll learn the stone hoe the crude planter, the wooden barrel, as well as crude compost and the stone mill. Um, these are very important because you need a hoe in order to till your fields. Your crude planters, which are your very first planter you get, they are they're the they're very basic. They don't really give a whole lot of um, fertilization. Um, they don't require a lot of water. You can only plant up to four crops in each of them. And each player within a clan can have up to five of these said planters. Um, the other downside to these planters is they take a very long time to grow a crop. I think it's almost two, sometimes up to three times longer to grow what you could normally grow in a large field like this because they just, they're, they're minimum. They minimize the amount of time. And then if you don't have, um, access to a well you'll have wooden barrels which you'll fill up with water to keep your crops uh watered compost which provides all three types of fertilizer and if we come over here you can see that there's green manure basic ash and organic fertilizer so these are your basic ones right here so if you come up to a plot and you look down at a plot you'll notice that you have moisture soil then you have green manure organic fertilizer and ash fertilizer depending on the type of seed so if we open up our inventory we'll use the seed that i'm going to be planting here low quality soybean if you look on the description it tells you that the field must have at least 30 um till so if you go in here and you pull out your hoe you'll notice that when you use the soil when i hit it it goes up 0 0.86 1.72 2.58 that has to be at least 30 in order to plant a seed of a low quality you don't have to go all the way up okay so going back in here it says the moisture requirement one seed requires 357 moisture uh requires 27 green manure fertilizer nine organic fertilizer and 134 fertilizer per seed this is very important this is per seed so if you're using a crude planter which only allows you to plant four of a crop you need to multiply everything from moisture green manure manure organic fertilizer and ash fertilizer by four so you need to multiply all four of those numbers by four if you're doing it on a large piece of farmland like this, which uses 60, because there are four of these here. There's one here, here, and then there are two more there. These are 60. So you have to multiply the, each of those numbers by 60. 
and if they have to fit within the parameters of your moisture and all three of your fertilizers. If they don't, you need access to a well for the water or buckets. If you're near a water source, you can run over, fill up a bunch of buckets and then pour them in here to fill up the moisture. The fertilizer part is a little bit more tricky because in order to make fertilizer, you have to have access to a stone mill, okay? Once you have access to a stone mill, you'll get access to be able to make the basic fertilizer and basic manure, except I believe the basic compost is made in your inventory right there. So the crude compost, which takes just rotten meat and wood ash, doesn't really give a lot of fertilizer. You get, you get a decent amount, but not a whole lot. Okay. So with this, um, you're, you're going to be using this if you're using the crude planters or if you're using the guild planters. So what I mean by guild planters is if you open up, if you're part of a guild and they allow you to use them, you go to guild tech, you have the common planter, which allows you to plant nine crops. And then later on, you get the exclusive planter, which also allows you to plant nine, but it has a higher teal, um, more fertilizer, more moisture, stuff like that. And it just became nighttime. So I apologize if it's a little dark in the game. Um, <clears throat> so there is that. So you have to keep all of that in mind when planting stuff. And again, you can make the wooden, uh, the crude planter, the wooden barrel and the crude compost in your inventory. And all those require you to be level 16. When you hit level uh, 17, you get access to things like vegetable oil, flour, bone mill, soy gum, rice, to be able to start grinding this stuff up. When you hit 25, you get access to the basic fertilizers to be able to craft as well as more stuff. And then the big one is 34 because that gives you access to irrigation, which gives you the well. With, the, with that, you also get access to the bronze hoe, as well as compost, and some more types of different things for farming. When you hit 38, you get access to the farm shed. And then my personal favorite, you get access to the common fertilizer, which gives you anywhere between 100 to 300 um, fertilization. And what do I mean by 100 to 300 fertilization? Well, let's go up here. We're going to go to traits, we're going to go to physique, and you're going to go to planting. Now, planting is very important for farmers, okay? When doing any farming action from plowing a field to picking a crop or watering a field, you will get uh, points towards your planting skill, okay? So at 450, you'll have to pay your first amount of copper in order to level up. And then at 600, you'll have to pay it again. And then at 750, you have to pay it again. As you can see, I'm stuck at 600 at the moment because I need 20K in order to level up my, to do the breakthrough in order to level up so I can go to 750, which will allow me to get the final fertilization point, which is right here, which will get me 300 fertilizer for common. You get your first one at level 300, which is actually really not that hard to hit. Um, all you need to do is throw some dragon points in or use your proficiency buff if you have access to um, the blessings. If you have access to a blessing, you can usually get those at a uh, guild banner. So the big thing over there. Um, that's another video for another time. So, And then once you do that, you'll come up to a plot. You'll till your field. You will plant your seeds based off of the fertilization. Uh, there's more than enough fertilization on these fields right now for the uh, seeds that we're going to be planting here today. I'm going to hurry up until these two fields right here, this one and this one. And I'm going to plant the soy gum and then I'm going to show you guys how to harvest all of that. All right, guys, we're back. So as you guys can see, the field is done. So as all of the low quality soybean that we planted, um we can now get out here and start harvesting it so as you're going to notice on the right hand side as we are picking the crops you will start seeing things from low quality seeds common seeds and then the low quality soybean and every now and then possibly you'll see a multiplier 
that multiplier is a part of one of the skills that you get for having high planting it can increase the amount of seeds or crops that you get of a specific tier low high or uh, low common high or premium uh, so i'm going to finish harvesting all of this and then i will bring you guys back once we have it all done but roughly you will get anywhere from it's kind of a, it's it's really random depending on your rng with the multiplier but usually you can get about 1500 to 2000 with a high level crop multiplier for low tier um of a specific low tier crop per field per 60 seed field so it's actually really beneficial to be make sure you're leveling your planting in order to get the maximum amount of return for your crops that you plant and also keep in mind that as you're harvesting seeds those seeds are based off of your skill level too so if you have the low quality seed skill you will be able to get a hundred percent return for to some extent i wouldn't say it's a hundred percent it's more like 80 to 90 percent chance of getting seeds back per field um so most of the time when i harvest a low a low quality crop with my skill buff and i harvest let's say these 60 plants on this specific field i will get anywhere from 80 to 100 seeds low quality back which is profit so that's why it's very important to level your skills for planting in order to make sure that you get a return on those seeds so you don't have to buy more or go out and farm more okay so i'm going to jump ahead to the next thing here real quick and i'll bring you guys back for that all right so the next thing i want to point out to you guys is after you harvest a crop you'll notice that it leaves behind a husk now there are a few ways you can deal with this you can just let it decay like i am on this field so you can see how it's already partially decayed um it it will restore a little bit of fertilizer but it won't restore a lot of it at all the other option you have is to use either a hoe a scythe a farming scythe if you're high enough level so the farming scythe you actually learn all the way down here so this is the two-handed farming scythe it's really really good for this type of thing you have to be level 52 in order to unlock it um, it will allow you to harvest or not harvest but get rid of the husk and put it back in as fertilizer and it does a massive amount of it um, it does require uh 750 pull arm skill for maximum damage um so the other thing you can do is you will come in here with a hoe and you'll just hit it now this gets a little tedious after a while because it takes a while and as you can see it puts a little bit of fertilizer back in not a whole lot you get like usually a few thousand of uh if it's the larger fields like this you get a few thousand of the main fertilizer back so in this case it would be ash um the other option you can do is to use a weapon uh, i recommend if you're going to do this to use a pull arm because you want to get the side swing if you can get your character to do it sometimes it's a little funky yeah i don't recommend using weapons for this like this because you lower your durability on your weapon doing this and you miss a lot but that is an option and as you can see it does put it in there but it's going down so fast you barely get to notice it i don't recommend this method because it's a waste of weapon durability so just my personal opinion usually it's best to wait until 52 where you unlock the scythe the farming scythe because it also allows you to harvest a ton of crops while also removing the husk and turning it into fertilizer right away so i do recommend doing this because i know it might seem you know and it takes like an extra few minutes to do but that extra you know four or five thousand fertilizer you will get from doing this um goes a long way in saving you on manu like actually having to use your own fertilizer now that doesn't mean you won't have to use it but four or five thousand is a lot and of course once you get to you know 52 and you unlock the really good fertilizer in the game and you can start making it it at that point you can pretty much ignore doing this but in the early game, you want to try to save on fertilizer as much as possible. This also allows you to till the field at the same time while putting a little bit of fertilizer back into it. So there we go. We were able to, uh, I'd say about two or 3,000 fertilizer for ash fertilizer got put back in. So another method 
that I wanted to talk about is called crop rotation. Uh, if you're not familiar with crop rotation, it is basically where when one fertilizer starts to get low. So let's say like, for instance, let's use these two fields because we are farming soybeans. So they use a lot of ash fertilizer. So we used up about, I'd say close to a little over 10 K, maybe 13 K fertilizer, um, growing these, uh, soybeans on the plot land. You could do this maybe two or three times before the ash fertilizer is gone. Once the ash fertilizer gets really, really low, you're going to want to rotate your crops and ro uh, crop rotation basically means that you want to find something that already uses extremely low ash fertilizer. So like low quality wheat or uh, low quality barley, um, low quality rice. Those use really, really low ash fertilizer. Um, let's put these seeds away real quick. So those are the types of things that you're going to want to do in order to rotate your crops so you can start using the other two fertilizers. So maybe you want to throw some wheat down because wheat uses really low ash fertilizer, but it uses more organic. And if your organic is capped out, then you just rotate it in. And this will also help you on saving on actual fertilizer. So you're going to want to do a crop rotation. Um, I'm going to be actually growing um, low quality uh, rice because we actually do need low quality rice for a couple of recipes. So I'm going to grab two stacks of these seeds real quick and I'll be putting these in as well. Now, rice uses a ton of moisture. So you have to make sure you stay on top of that when doing this, especially when utilizing um, those you're going to want to make sure that you are keeping up with this so you're going to want to put a little bit of food in here you want to keep up with your well worker because if you run out of water granted you could have all the fertilizer in the world but if you run out of water your crop gets low you lose all your seeds and you get like one third of your crop yield back all right so i'm going to finish getting this all together and then i'm going to plant the next next batch but that is farming in a nutshell. Okay, guys. Now you can do that. Like, again, it gets really crazy in advance once you start getting up into these high quality and even premium seeds. Because you can see we have some premium for these. These were because somebody made a derp a derp. But as you can see, like, look at that ash fertilizer for a one premium seed. That's a thousand ash fertilizer. That means 10 seeds, 10. Just planting 10 of these is a little over 10K ash fertilizer, which means I could probably plant about 25 of these seeds out of the 60 with before that field runs out of ash fertilizer. That's where actual fertilizer comes in handy. You can overcap it to make up for that fact. So once you start getting into the higher tiers, you got to start doing a little bit of math. Um, as you can see, like uh, some of these... 600 moisture starts shooting up high quality wheat moisture is still pretty good on these but then organic is really high uh, with this one moisture and green manure is really high moisture and ash fertilizer is high and then obviously moisture and ash fertilizer is really high and then there are even some seeds like honeysickle and false daisies which are considered tier two and how or, or even in this case honeysickle is a tier three seed because the, bit, the way you can tell is there are a few ways you can tell. So when you sort the box, it always puts the higher tier seeds near the top. So right away, you can see that false daisies and honeysickle are literally right between common and high quality. And then another way you can tell is if you look at the description down in the bottom, it will say the name of the seed, the type of yield, yield common. So right there, that tells you that this is technically a common yield and it needs at least 50 of the ground uh, tilled. So you got to till 50% of the, of the soil. And then this one right here, yield high. This is a high quality seed. So honeysickle is considered high. And high needs 70 plus. So if you look at the 70 ones that actually say high on it, you can see that the seed name, yield high, tells you the soil till needs to be 70 plus percent. So if you're ever curious and you're like, well, I don't know, like... Uh, you know, is this considered a high or common? Cause you're trying to understand your skills and stuff like that. And you're like, well, I want to be able to farm maximum amount of 
you know, I want to be able to get all of my seeds back for my common or for quote unquote, let's just use honeysickle. You know, you want to get all your seeds back for honeysickle. If you want to get a hundred percent of your seeds back for honeysickle, you're going to have to do the breakthrough for 600 because in order way to get your crop seeds back for honeysickle is you need 675 breeding expert three, because that's the only way you get a hundred percent seeds back or you get a boost to hundred percent seeds back. And then when that happens, you get low qual or common crops. You can get up to three times seeds back and stuff like that. But that's how that works. And then, of course, for honeysickle, if you want to double your crop yield, farmer expert, you have to get all the way up to 750, which is the next gatekeep cap for pushing up to 900. So that's how that works. So hopefully this helps you guys out with farming and how it works. It doesn't matter if you're using crude planters common planters farmland or if you're out and about in the world and you happen to run into these big farm fields they all work exactly the same as long as you're keeping track of every seed how much moisture the fertilization needed how many seeds you can plant and you're doing a little bit of math you've got a well farming is pretty straightforward but it is very time consuming keep in mind too that when you are farming higher level seeds they take longer so, you know, you're looking at about two days in game time for low quality, you know, a week for common, you know, basically you're looking at about an hour to two hours. Then you're looking at about three to four hours and then six to eight hours. And then premium is like half a day. It's like 12 hours plus for premium crops. So it is definitely time consuming, but it is rewarding because if you've got a large clan and you have two or three farmers, that are able to keep up with this. They can also keep up with doing silkworms. They end up taking care of your animals. That's a huge portion of this game that a lot of your other clan members can focus on going out and recruiting or breeding elephants and horses, or, you know, farming different tiers of resources like um, iron and copper and all that stuff. They can go out and do the exploring while your farmers take care of this. So, and eventually, of course, your farmers want to go out and explore too, though. But if you've got a handful of farmers, it's really simple. But if you're playing solo, try to keep it small. Don't try to overdo it. Um, you can spend an entire day, hell, an entire week just growing stuff. But it's extremely rewarding. You don't have to waste a lot of money on the market. I highly recommend that you always have a farmer that takes care of your animals as well as your fields in a clan. Even if you're just a three-man group. It's a very rewarding and very profitable thing to do in the game. So anyways, guys, hopefully this guide helped you guys out with farming. Sorry to beat around a dead horse with this one. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to ask. I will try to answer them as best as I can. If I miss anything, you can ask down below. Um, also, guys, don't forget to subscribe and like the video as well. That way you guys can see more Myth of Empires content as I start releasing it. I'm slowly going to start updating my guides from the previous version of the game from over two plus years ago. Just to make sure that if there are any changes like these fields, for instance, that they are now being represented in my guides. Anyways, other than that, guys, take care. Peace out. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.